Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Today's guest, drummer for Grammy Award winning artist Darius Rucker, Jeff Marino. And now, Rich Redman. What's up, rock and rollers? Rich Redman here. Another episode of The Rich Redman Show coming to you from Music City, USA. I got this down like a script. You really do. Music I, City, USA, Nippers Corner, Bradio. <laughs> I know. A lot of people just said, man, just say Music City. No one knows where Nipper Corners it is. But you, you know, our guest today might be in the know, but we're going to save that. So, Jim McCarthy, JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. I yes. saw you last night. Yeah, we You hung. had me over for dinner. Yeah, you and your, Mr. Hull. Yeah, the Johnny Hull. Mm -hmm. We've been working together for a decade. Love that kid. Great set of hair, right? He really does. He doesn't do anything to his hair. He just steps out of the shower and it looks like he's a superhero. What's that kind of, wavy curl? That's what I do. He's got that superhero chin. Yep. God, that kid. He's just got a lot going for him. He does. You know? <laughs> One of those people that's just, you know, can eat 3,000 calories a day. He does eat 3,000 calories a day, but yeah. he's running sometimes once a week, 10 miles, a, and then he runs five miles a day, mm -hmm. does all sorts of one-arm push-ups. This kid's like rock. Does he really do one-arm push-ups? He does one-arm push-ups, and I saw him like throw it. He can throw it to either side, and then just straight push-ups. He was doing 500 a day for a while. The kid will just make you feel so lazy. But I do go to the gym with him sometimes, and mm -hmm. let's just say he lifts heavier. But hey, I'm just happy that I, at my age, I'm there. I'm putting in the work. I've got the, the I'm glistening. I look That's at right. myself in the mirror. It's like, hey, we're, we're doing this. We're <laughs> we're in the game. That's so right. your bride cooked us. Uh, we said we were kind of like dieting after the holidays. So she made a nice fat chicken breast. Mm -hmm. some, They're huge. Some, uh, what are those things that make your pee smell? Aspergress. Yes, asparagus yeah. and a nice salad. <clears throat> and we polished off a couple bottles of wine. Couple, yeah. <laughs> so do you have a wine buzz today? No wine buzz. I'm right. just a little kind of groggy and I'm trying to get some coffee and I got to hydrate. And then we were we were going to smoke a cigar, but I said, I got to get home. I got to research my guests. I got to be in good spirits. And then I went home and smoked a cigar on my patio. We anyways. did the same thing. We kind of, we conversed till about one o'clock. Yeah, we woke up and it, it smells tasted like a cat. Like a, took a, a dump in my mouth. Yeah, pretty much a dwarf. <laughs> hey, let's get into it because, you know, we, this area is right with so many world-class musicians and this next gentleman is no stranger to greatness i've known him for so many years right our guest today mm -hmm. is the longtime drummer for grammy award-winning darius rucker mr jeff marino yeah. what's how up are bud how are you you know, some people call me Rich. Some people call Richie. me Richie. I'll take it. What works? No, what do you like a lot of people who are that I'm that I'm close to that I've known for a long time. They call me Richie. Family I, members. I think it's an old like we've known you twenty years or so. I've known crazy. Richie. I walked into the Exit Inn, I think in nineteen ninety seven or nineteen ninety eight, and I saw you playing on stage. It was a double drummer gig <laughs> with a group called the Dead Set. Dead Set. And you guys did Grateful Dead, mm -hmm. like spot on covers, right? Spot on loosely. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if, it if wasn't like tribute where you're like note for note. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know if was, I would want to play good. note for note everything that Grateful Dead played. Too, too, too many notes. <laughs> I think you'd have to do drums. Too many notes. <laughs> yeah. And so I said to myself, who is that drummer? It was like, boosh, bosh, boo, boosh, bosh, boosh. And it was just like, who is that guy? So we, I was like getting my feet wet, getting around town, going to all the watering holes, trying to see who was who. Who's, who's doing what? Yeah. Great band. And so I was lucky to be in that band. You went to Berkeley, right? I did. So I did. Jim Riley and I are North Texas guys. You went to Berkeley. Um, what was the year? Dinosaurs roamed the earth, right? I mean, ninety-one <laughs> to five. Okay. So probably the richest time for drummers at Berkeley. You're younger than me. Then okay, a little, yeah, a couple. So who was teaching there? Desenso wasn't there, right? He wasn't there yet. Uh, Finn, Larry Finn, Rick Considine, mm. uh, Steve Wilkes. It's a new guy at the time, Ron Savage. So some of these guys, guy. are they still there? Holding it down? I think all of them except for Constant Diner. Keep in touch there. with your uh, teachers? Two of them. Are three. They, they've got to be very proud of you. Hopefully. Right? I mean, the idea is that Hopefully. you pay all the pay you you pass the test to get into a the hallowed ground of a school like Berkeley. Right. And then you pay all your money, right? Which is like, oh my God, I'm going into the music business. I'm gonna pay these bills back. Yeah. These loans. Hopefully you get some scholarship. You get hope you get this life changing experience, mostly from being in the environment, right? That's what it's about. And then It's a you, microcosm of the music business. You just decided to mm. it was it ever LA or New York no, on your you said it was Nashville. Never. 
grew up in Indiana, LA never felt right. Right. Nashville was like, does it feel a little bit better when you go out there Indiana, now? Or? No. It still wouldn't be home. Yeah. I like working out there, but never felt like home. Never felt comfortable there. So what was the year that you moved to Nashville? 95. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're right. a long time. Yeah. yeah. Long time. Mm. We don't need to do the math. Do the math. <laughs> no, we don't that'd need be, to do uh, the math. That'd be twenty-five years. We don't need. Yeah, to do that. too much math. Yeah, because I moved here math. in ninety-seven. Jim yeah, Riley. it was me, Jim Riley, um, Pat McDonald, and Lee Kelly. That was kind of our group of guys. When, yeah, I remember when you and Lee came to and Jim. Yeah. yeah, good crew of guys. Good crew, guys. There's and a lot of us that are still. So working. What were you doing Thank in ninety-five? The day you moved to Nashville, you got your bags packed. You're single at the time, right? Ish. Ish. Engaged. You were engaged. I was All at right. the time. Nice. It didn't end well. We can move on. Oh, this was, to, it this didn't turn into a marriage. <laughs> it did. A, a brief one. A brief oh, one. Very you, brief. You yeah. got two in your belt. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mulligan. <laughs> <laughs> well, the music business is not for the faint of heart. So you moved to it's town. Tough. What's the first thing you do? First thing I did is I had a box of cassette demos. I go over. I signed up to the union. I started crashing parties. Sitting so in. I knew one guy. Uh, named Chad Hunley. I don't know if you know Chad. Chad, yeah. Great Dude, drummer. Frighteningly good Lives drummer. in Franklin. Scary good drummer. Lives in Franklin. He's had yeah. some health issues, which he yeah. was never really able to do the road thing. Truly gifted cat. Uh, but he had, uh, he was teaching in Franklin. Yeah. At Shuff Music. So, and I knew John David. JD's family. Owns we, we met in high school, actually. Yeah. So, those are the only two guys I knew. Kind of chummed up with them. Hung out. Uh, I ended up meeting Rob Bias. Right, right. Blake yeah. Shelton's band, mm-hmm. um, bass player. He was working with uh, his ex-wife Rachel Proctor at the time, putting yes. some stuff together. And he played yeah, for Rachel. Yeah, played for Rachel. Played for Blake. We kind of did that thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, when were you? When were you in Blake's band? Blake Shelton, the on voice. and off a few times. <laughs> okay, so before he had anything going on for a lot of years, and then once he was, uh, I did some stuff when he was doing the first Toby Keith tour. I think that he was on. Tracy was sort of in and out there a few minutes. Oh, and then you kind of passed it on to Tracy. Well, he, long story there, but there was a, Tracy was in, Tracy was out, then Tracy was back in. You don't want to get into it. Uh, I'll know. let Tracy tell the story. I'll let Tracy tell that story. <laughs> I think he knows more than I do. See, Jim right now is like, he's, he's touching my leg under the table, not because he's no, like Not that, for any reason. But just because- um, Just because I love you. Just because he's like, go, dig deeper, find out about yeah, that. Yeah. What's going on? Pull a Howard Stern. But oh, no, I, they, these are my friends. I don't want to like make him feel uncomfortable. Yeah. What do you mean? How is it uncomfortable? No, well, think, this, there's the long, long, long and short. I'll say long and short. I think Tracy would say, sit back this is he and- Blake got sideways for a bit, and Blake and I had a really good relationship from all our years, mm-hmm. in the earlier years, Right, and so I sort of stepped in and held the reins for a little bit until they kissed and made up. Yeah. Right. And you're working with Rachel, and she had- Working with Rachel, she she had great, a, fantastic. Remember course. Ryan Hoyle? Yeah, that was much later, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because they, he there was played a moment. their band, they dated yeah, maybe? Yeah, there was a thing or there or a, something. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going there. Yeah. For anybody. And so, what are you, are you half Italian? Are you full Italian? What are you? Half. Dad's so, side. What's the other half? Okay, for me, it's my mom's side. Okay, so you're the other So way. you got your dad's side, and he's pale skin. No, I got... And my mom is dark skin. It sounds like the two so I got, Indians. Yeah, he's the, he's the Italian side, but I got the British Color, Viking yeah. side from yeah, mom. You got like an Irish. Red hair, little, yeah, freckles, little that's, we, that's I have the same combination. Yeah. We're Italian. Yeah. Uh, British? No, I'm, I think I'm English, so, Welsh. Really? I, I haven't done the 23 I'm Italian and, and Greek. I don't want the, the government yeah, having that much information. No, there's too much. Yeah. Too much. That's bad, right? Yeah, it's bad. A lot of people are doing it, but I think it's some. it could be a conspiracy thing. It could be. It, it could be they're building a bank. Of data. Of the, yeah. To use against us. At some point. They're going to say, we're going to release all your information to such and such and such and such until you pay us $1 million. No, all Google right. already has everything. Didn't know we were on the Alex Jones show, but okay. <laughs> Google's got everything already. The Google box. You know, it's funny. We talked to you yesterday about, uh, or the, just at the beginning of the show, of things that we talked about last night at dinner, and I just thought of a topic being on the Italian thing. You ever go back and rewatch shows, and you, you said you wanted to rewatch Entourage? Yeah, because now that I've been... You know, in LA, on and off for seven, eight years, I'll yeah. probably know all the locations. Yeah. Oh, true. At the time it true. was on, I didn't know the locations. Yeah, we started watching The Sopranos again. Yeah, you ever that's not that a show? bad idea. I haven't gone back to that. Yeah, that is definitely is, rewatch binge worthy. Yeah. It is time machine worthy. I mean, you know, it's so you know uh, antiquated with the technology they use, and yeah. sure. they still got flip phones. And oh uh, yeah, it is a time know, machine. There, you know, there's, there's, you know, Tony's at the breakfast table. He's reading the back of his cereal box. Because right, because that's no what we used to do. Yeah. 
Uh, you know, can you believe you're pals with Liberty DeVito? Tell you a little, a little, so yeah, not as he, much. He almost did the little Steven part. Oh, really? From what I, I know understand, oh, I gotta ask be... Lib about it exactly what happened. That would have been, been, like, been weird. That would have been, a, well, because you know little Steven as the, at, you know, once he, that he did actor it gets ingrained. Yeah. Yeah, but if you never saw him as that. As right. uh, Sal? Interesting. Yeah, because, you know. That would be different. I think two it of Lib's daughters are, are big time actresses that right. are on like Chicago Fire, Chicago Hope. They're, yeah. They're all over. The franchise. There. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. It's funny that you mentioned like identifying uh, places around L.A. because the last time I was there, several many many years ago, uh, I was actually um, oddly enough the movie that we had on in the hotel room was Heat. Remember that movie? Yeah, that was yeah. a nice three-hour movie. Pacino. Yeah. And so it's a movie my wife falls asleep to every single time I put it on. So <laughs> or but every I, movie in my I, house. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, but okay. the first scene that Pacino and De Niro were ever in together is in that movie. And it takes place in a restaurant that was literally right around the corner from where I was staying. Now, from what I understand, a lot of the scenes that those guys are in, they shot independently. They were never in each other's path. No, they were in the scene together. Yeah. But, but that of, one scene. Yeah. That one scene. In the Some movie. of the other ones they did without. And the, and the end. When he chases him down at the airport. Mm. Yeah, that is, that is a good one. Yeah, that's a good, great movie. And wasn't our friend Danny Trejo in that movie too? Wasn't he? Yes. The yeah. lot, there was a big cast. Val Kilmer. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of people. Doesn't yeah. it feel like that movie feels like to us, it was probably like 10 something years ago, but it was probably 20. It was 90, about yeah. time yeah. when you moved to Nashville. Probably, yeah, too much. Yeah. We're not doing the math. I think it was Again, 90, 25 years. Probably 97. 96, 96 97. 97. Right before I moved to Nashville. Yeah. I remember my friend Ken Tondra was living in Jersey. Oh, Ken. Right? Berkeley, did, buddy. Did you, did you go to Berkeley, Berkeley with Ken? Yeah, dude. Okay. Right. And Chris. So, so right after he finished Berkeley, Ken moved to New Jersey and was drum teching all over the city. I, I didn't know that. And actually. there was that major storm that mm -hmm. happened in like 96, 97. And yeah, yeah. everybody was like trapped. And it was like still pay phone times. And so we went to go see Heat together. It was crazy. Really? Oh, Ken, he knows Ken. I know yeah. Ken, yeah. So Ken yeah, is- Kenny, I met him. Yeah. Ken nice Tondra? Oh, what a great guy. He's a dude. Yeah, he's a father now. Late yeah. life father. Yeah. Yeah. Really? He lives out in Austin, right? Yeah. yeah I know Texas. Austin. And, yeah. Chris is still the same town, I think, his brother. And he's smart Guitar because he's a smart dude. he has a studio, and when he's on the road playing with somebody, somebody's in a studio. Somebody's make, paying he's to money. be in his house. That's it. I know. He's so smart. Mailbox money. Mailbox money. So tell us about this relationship with Darius. Uh, 13 years? 12, 13. 12, 13 years. Yeah. So he just came out to our show the other night. I got to That's back right. him up on Wagon Wheel. On Wagon Wheel. So okay. Jason, and it was yeah. a really, really fun thing. Great guy. Um, he's backstage and I go, hey, can I count it? You know, just so there's no confusion. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. I didn't know if we were going to have a guitar right, in our right, ears or right. whatever. It's like, let's not chance it. Right. He goes, Count it off. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Cool. Yeah. To you could totally tell that this is a guy that grew up playing in yeah. the clubs, doing it the old-fashioned way. He's done it all. Right? Literally. Yeah. I mean, they came up They came up the hard way. And everybody had that but cracked rear way. view rector record. Yeah, 17 like, million or some ridiculous We all like had that. it. I had it. I had it on cassette. I probably had two copies. Couldn't go anywhere without point. hearing it. No. It was, was, they were kind of like a college party band, right? So they worked yeah. that South... They owned, actually, that South, Southeast college circuit i mean they had darius tells us they had 401k before they ever had a record deal for the their guys and their crew because they were smart. a literal yeah and they were smart about it but they were an organization like it was right. not we're playing some clubs like it was a pro organization before they ever even they uh, made the national it was scene. them inc yeah right? they were a business essentially yeah wow and Which some, of the, you, some yeah. of the guys are still there like crew guys the crew guys really? some of them yeah wow cool. sound guys 20 what six years yeah give or take now, the, where did the old band go? The the Blowfish. They they still tour. They're still doing. They yeah. they did. Yeah, they did last year. They did. I don't know if you want to call it reunion for that. Whatever it was, they did it. <clears throat> the first thing they've done in a while. They do f three to four five events a year. Energy. Every year they always have. Um, since he's gone solo. Yeah. But last year they kind of decided to go do a summer and just blow it out. Nice. Yeah, I think it was a good payday. I'm sure it was. God, dang. I'm sure it was. So I have yeah. to ask when people find out who you play for. What's the typically the first thing they ask? I don't know that they ask anything. They tell a story. Oh, do they? With first See, song they heard, first record, first, you know, there's always a, yeah. whatever their relationship with Darius is. Right. I always think it's interesting. I know Rich sees this. Every fan has a uh, relationship yeah. with an artist in their mind. Some way, it's a, it's a oh, memory, yeah. it's a, you know, whatever. So that's what I hear more than questions. Really? Yeah. I would say, you know, does he yeah. still go by ho Hootie? Well, he actually, My never, first question. he never was Hootie. He'll take yeah, it. Yeah, isn't that strange? He's, he's not going to get mad, but, he was never Hootie. Right. So Hootie and the Blowfish were two uh, 
I hate to say you use the word frat boys, but they were buddies of theirs in college. They happened to walk into a party at the same time. I was like, hey, man, look, Hootie and the Blowfish are here. And that became the name. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So neither one of them are in the band. Neither one of them have any associate. But because of the perceived singer band. Yeah, but know. I think the real Hootie's probably walking around going, you know that band? That's they me. named it after me. He That's probably me. should have trademarked that. And people are like, sure. He should have trademarked that thing. Mm-hmm. You, you know, know who we just had on was so. uh, Brad Arnold from Three Doors Down. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, how did you come up with your name? He goes, well, we saw a sign that said, Doors down, right? And then yeah. you put a number in front of it. <laughs> yeah. It's it's crazy and how he, things come up. Ra- yeah, it Rascal Flatts story is pretty weird too. If no, I what was that? Right. What was I don't it? remember yeah. the story. I just remember hearing it go. Well, that's so random. Yeah, yeah. but it's a random name too. Yeah, you know, very weird. So, but, but what is do you know? What is the story behind what? their name? Rascal Flatts. Yeah. We should have asked you with, really. Something to do with driving. Is it? It's, I think it has to do with the flats, like out in. You know, Bonneville Salt Flats. I think it has something to do with that. Mm. I just remember hearing the story and go, that's the most random, weird thing ever. But I have a great name for a band Freezer Beef. I know. He's, uh, he's, yeah. Freezer Beef. Mm. I don't know we, if it's great. We have a lot of great yeah, band great, names that's a great that, name. that don't need to be shared. <laughs> Hey, so so Jeff, you're you know you're in a sense classically trained because you come up you came up taking lot taking yeah. lessons, well, and right? I, and I did do classical. I did a lot of classical in high school. Did you do your timpani marimba? I did. And stuff? I tested out all my mallets and timpani stuff at Berkeley like the first week. Which now, was what was awesome. the degree you got at Berkeley? So I got a performance degree. Okay, yeah. So, so it's like, a bachelor's, but it's in performance. Is that what Ken got? He might have gotten an Something education like degree, but I think he was performance because education. Uh, Johnny Rab did that. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. Our friend Johnny yeah, Rab is yeah. playing with Collective Soul. We always say to ourselves, you know, would you see Johnny playing with Collective Soul is like point zero one percent of his ability. Yeah, amazing. He's I mean, crazy. His so it just most makes, creative brain in drumming. Yeah, mm, and he's, by far he really could do stand up comedy. He's got the energy for he it. He absolutely could. He really could. Johnny and I's relationship's uh, interesting. You I know, miss you, him. You, you want to hear a weird story? So uh, how, please. So you know, there were so many drummers at Berkeley when I went there. It was Abe Junior. You know, Nathaniel Morton. John okay. Blackwell, rest his oh, soul. Okay, so Nate Morton, the drummer for The Voice. Nate Morton, Nathaniel at the time. Uh, uh, who's from Nashville? Nate? Yeah, he's from I, Nashville. I thought he was born. Was he, he born was here? born here. Because he was a California kid. Yeah. So, But yeah, so he was there. Abe Jr. From Paul McCartney's band. Paul McCartney's band. Uh, John Blackwell. Prince. God yeah. rest his soul. God rest his soul. Uh, little John... Uh, um, little John Roberts. Who did he play with? Um, little John... Uh, Jill Scott. He's doing CV Wonder now. Yeah. He's doing a few other things. <laughs> He's done a few things. He came to school. He was touring with DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. And oh, then he right. left That's that. Cool. Or when it wrapped up, he came to Berkeley. So we're all like, who's this guy? Right. And you smoking, just, just straight ahead that stuff smoking. Up. I mean, you know, the guy had some of the best jazz chops you'll hear. Yeah. But anyway, jazz so who else was there? Johnny. God, there's so many cats. Cat Tondra was there. Uh, what's, the, what's the Johnny story? Uh, Antonio Sanchez was there. Dang. I don't want to leave people out. Like Antonio was there. He was a freak. Yeah. So the, uh, if you guys ever saw the movie Birdman, that was shot that's, with that's Antonio, one yeah. shot, as many continuous shots as possible. The music was composed by a drummer. Where largely ninety percent of the the soundtrack was just drums, just compositional drums. drums, to the point that they wouldn't let it qualify for an, a Grammy that or an Oscar because it, they didn't consider it music. It wasn't a composition. That's bad. Yeah, it was bad. Anyway, all right. But did so, they work so, it out? Did they work it out? Did they come around? No, he didn't. He didn't get it. Like that it sucks. was a whole. It, it wouldn't even. They wouldn't even let it be voted on because it wasn't a composition. But now it's become it a thing. And he's getting hired to do a oh, lot the, of that. The guys, yeah. Yeah. Um, go please go watch any YouTube video. Watch his left foot. Antonio's his left foot. Clave is just yeah, otherworldly. All right, so the Johnny Rap store. <laughs> so John and I were at school together. Both skinny white kids wanted to play R and B. Yeah. You know, we were like funk guys. That's what we wanted to do. So, and there was an So what was the of, funk bands you guys were listening to at the time? Like Fishbone and like James Brown. I was more brand new heavies. Their their oh, record yeah. had just come out. Uh, Jamiroquai had just come out. Oh, uh, the first one, a Emergency on, uh, I forget what the name of that record is. Super great record. Um, you ever level 42 guy? Uh, there, yeah, for sure. Tom Hurst was here and he's like, that's my guy. Yeah, Phil he's Gold, all about Phil, Phil Gold. Yeah, Phil I think he has his tattoo right here. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> and I didn't mean to call you out. But so that was kind of, you know, and I was a Motown kid too. That was oh, my right. sort of passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he and I sort of wanted to do the similar things and there was a very competitive vibe at Berkeley at the time. Sure. Might still be there. I don't know how North Texas imagine. was. Very competitive. Massively competitive. Everybody's, a microcosm. Everybody's, yeah, everybody's chasing after the certain things and like the one o'clock band, whatever. You know, for us, it was the uh, uh, the Yo Team, mm-hmm. um, which I was super lucky to get at the end of the year. So what is that, the Yo Team? That's, that's our one o'clock. That's oh, Berkeley's one o'clock. Band. You know, it's not a big band. It's a pop. 
It's like a pop. But it's ensemble. the one. It's the like the it's, pop. It's ensemble. the one you have to get into. Gotcha. Uh, or you want to get into, and it plays the commencement. It does some other stuff. It does. They travel occasionally wow. and whatnot. So it's sort of the flagship ensemble. So the people at Berkeley, they liked your backbeat and your time. And Apparently, because I didn't have a whole lot of flash. But I mean, hey, but brought about flash. That's what that we talk about flash. all the time. What's Paycheck. Gonna, what's going to get you hired? Paycheck. Man? What's going to make people tap? Time, their feet? grew, feel. What's going to make people tap their feet? They tap their feet and clap their hands without. Meaning to, yeah, you've done your gig exactly. That's how I look at it. So, back, so Johnny, so we <laughs> we just sort of I think we wanted everything, so we actually butted heads for years, like we were not friends, really. Oh, not at Johnny? all, not at all. I mean, we were we were not friends. A part of it, the yo team thing ended up being a big deal. Uh, I remember I talked to him the day after graduation, and he was very reluctantly congratulating me on saying, Man, you really sounded great, and you could tell it kind of killed him. <laughs> um, but we kind of talked it through. We worked today. It, it ended up. We ended up becoming best friends. But through yeah. sort of competing for all those years, because everybody kind of competed. John Blackwell was the biggest com- competitor there. You know, um, everybody just sort of wanted to get in it. But because of that, we ended up becoming best buddies. Life. Like he was in my wedding. Uh, yeah. Really? What year was that? The uh, two thousand. Nice. Two thousand. Yeah. So. So you best moved friend, here. love him to death. So I moved here right after. And then he moved here? Johnny probably. moved. He went back to Sacramento for a few years. And I actually mm-hmm. sort of talked him into coming to Nashville or helped encourage him to come to Nashville, which right. I don't know if he thanks me for that now or not. Well, we'll and see. the craziest thing with, all, weird. with all of his abilities, God, the first man. jobs he got in Nashville was Tanya Tucker and Hank Williams the third, which That's were it. not chops gigs. Both tough gigs. Yeah. Like to, as Hank's far a as tough like, gig. I did Hank the third. I did Hank as well. I think we, we all did. did. Yeah. We, it was a right of yeah. passage. And Jim killed it. I thought I always thought Jim sounded really great on that Riley. Well, I but, always I always said, "Hey, Hank, uh, can we rehearse? Can we get together?" No, He's like, "No, no, hell no, no." Didn't want it. Wanted Why? that looseness. Just wanted that in the moment. Wanted to be a feel thing. If you don't know the song, really? then yeah, just go with it. Learn it on the stage. Yeah, there's a little bit. I think that must that was like if Tanya was the early '80s, you had to play that gig. Mm-hmm. I think Hank Hank Third became the. Yeah. You have to do this. Is he, is he still out there doing it? Wasn't he doing like half metal, half country? Yeah. Right? He, like a metal he was way into the metal shelving. thing. Super, su- yeah, super metal stuff. Yeah. Well, you know what this makes me think of? You know, the reason why I ask about your training coming up is the School of Rock is our sponsor. They're the wonderful right, right, sponsor right, right. of our show. And there's two locations here in town, in Franklin and Nashville, right, Jim? So, if, hey, if you want to get your kids involved, you want to send them to the Nashville location, it's Nashville at schoolofrock.com. And if it's Franklin is more convenient, send them to Franklin. Franklin at schoolofrock.com. And... Um, these kids, man, they learn how to play musical instruments. They learn how to work together, how to be in a team, setting goals, being persistent. Man, so many life skills, Jim. Absolutely. You know, so my, our friends Angie and Kelly McCray are doing a great job holding the torch for the School of Rock. And they it's kind of like... Um, you know, when you go to school to be a welder or a mechanic, it's mm-hmm. like less book stuff. It's like, let's get it our hands dirty and right. learn a trade. Learn by doing. They learn by doing. And they put on great shows. They just had this amazing show at the Ryman. So get your kids involved with School of Rock, Nashville and School of Rock, Franklin. Actually, more like learn by playing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what they do. They put on shows to teach music. music. We don't yeah. work music. Yeah. They never said, go work the drums. They don't teach music to put on shows. They put on shows to teach music. I like that. Yeah, that's their concept. That's their tagline. And and you can get your kids involved between six, ages six and 18. And then there's even a program for adults. Yeah. You know. So much more engaging that way. Yeah, it is a great, great program. And imagine if that was around when we were younger. Oh, man, game changer. I was in a... What was the most mundane classes you took? I mean, you know, theory. You know, well, I, I, I remember at Texas Tech, before I went to the University of North Texas, I had to take physics of sound. And it wasn't taught by a musician. It was right. taught by a, a, phys- a physics teacher. A physics teacher. Yeah. And it, and it was so nerdy and horrible. Um, but that's part, a big part of college is just learning how to jump through hoops. Those hoops are on fire. A lot of times you don't. You have to walk clear across campus to take those classes. You don't want to do it. You'd rather stay in your room and shed the transcription of Asia sure it'll get your Steve Gad chops together but no you got to walk across campus and take algebra for the second time <laughs> very important yeah it's good perspective though you've, I didn't think of it that way you've probably used it a lot though. well we we 
jump through hoops in every day of our life, especially as, you know, we were talking about some uh, mutual friends we have that are in bands, that have been in bands for yeah. 22 years and how their houses look differently from our houses because we are journeyman <laughs> drummers. We are journeymen. And when we first moved to Nashville, I mean, look at your resume. This is fantastic. It's kind of a who's who. You work with Jody Messina, Blake Shelton, Allison Moore, pretty girl, Phil Vassar, Bo Bice, Cowboy Troy, Carolyn Don Johnson, Hank the Third, Jessica Andrews, the Warren Brothers, Aaron Lewis, Bill, the, the list goes There's on and on. And all those things are, have different requirements and expectations sure. from the drummer. So you have to yeah. learn how to read the room. We were in competition together so to yeah. get a lot of jobs. Yeah. And Jess, I've been in Nashville 23 years, you 25 years. Yeah. We were up for a lot of the same jobs. But for then sure. you settled in to work with working for Jody. That was a nice run. That right? was a good little stretch three and a half four year that's run, i mean that's a, a long gig. run enough. and then now yeah. with darius and then D, yeah very nice yeah and um i sort of missed the days i don't know about you you missed the days when we had to do three gigs a year uh i don't miss the financial uncertainty but i liked the hustle mm -hmm. you know when super you, fortunate to be where we are right. by the way if anybody i mean would well, never change it for the world but there was you're always learning tunes you're always yeah. running you're always doing you know learning new shows it was you know it was i think it was just yeah because it was part of our journey it's that exciting factor of the phone is always ringing yeah. and you're like oh my god who's on the other end of that show yeah. is it gonna, a phone is it going to change my life that's it, is, is, and it gonna, did happen yeah for both of us at times many times yeah so and you played with Aldine. You did showcases and stuff. Right? I did a few, yeah, did I did a few things. Of yeah, yeah. yeah. One and of Angela my worst. Calora. I think Angela did one or two. Yeah. I, one of my worst live gig experiences was was with, with Jason. Well, what happened? I don't know if he remembers this. Uh, they just dropped Hicktown. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. we're doing CRS two thousand four. Doing CRS at the convention center. Where the hell was I? Uh, Rushlow. I want to say Dina. Could have been with no, I want to say Dina. I could be wrong. Oh, maybe I had a commitment with Dina Carter. You might Carter. have had a commitment with Dina Carter. Dang, buddy. Maybe. Or it could have been Rush. Did I shave my legs for this? Maybe. But yeah, it. so we're doing we're doing Hicktown <laughs> out of the set of whatever. It was like an eight eight song set or something. But Hicktown was a single. I think we were closing with it. And you know it's all. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah, the bass drum beater breaks. Ah! Oh. Goes through the head. Like oh. the, the, the beater pops off. Yeah, and then so the, the rod goes, goes right through. So it's just like, okay. Was it a backline I'm yet? completely... Yeah. At this point. Backline kit. So yeah, floor top. Mm. Mm. Oh. oh my God, oh, on the just, single. Just, you just can't feel any more miserable or helpless. There's yeah. nothing you just can do. Floor time it. I hit that floor time as hard as I could hit <laughs> it to try God. to get that floor to God. It, it, at that point, it literally became one and three. Yeah. As hard as I could. There wasn't a fill. There was, I'm, gone. I'm just like, this is going to be my kick drum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did the I sound felt, guy pick so up on it and I, tweak the sound? I hope. All, I hope. Who knows? I was going to say, did he it's pick up on it? one of those convention it? center gigs. Who knows? You know, it's a weird room of radio folks, but just it was just a moment. The timing was just <laughs> Any room with radio folks awful. in it is weird. There's not a tech in the world that could have helped me. <laughs> no, because I mean, at that yeah. point, you can't get a new kick drum pedal. It doesn't, yeah. unless you can get a new bass. There's no way what to the fix. Heck do you, I mean, I guess that's where, you know, a, a double bass comes in hand. No, I saw that. I no, suppose. That's not going to even, right? Well, no. Did you play with your left foot? That happened to me once. But the head was toast. Because the rock went right there that's why you need the other, the other yeah you'd drum. have to have an actual mm. separate kick drum you'd have to have an X hat or a hat that like one of those clutches that closes oh the high hat and then dude it was just not but fun. we learned how not to be fun. boy what scouts was, in the sense that you always want to have an extra snare drum ready to go an extra bass drum pedal ready to go always. you have an extra head ready to go I saw but did Lover you Boy do you ever break a drum head on your snare drum and have, replace it it's, like it's, it's sure. the bottom one have the, you the bottom one's the scary one the bottom one pops all if the, the bottom time. one but pops, I mean, how fast does, can you get a snare drum replaced? Oh, you could swap snare drum in a right. uh, bar. If, if you have help, a bar. If you don't have help, right. two bars. Yeah, we've done it. I've done it oh, yeah. before tech days. You go to the you go to the sure. high tum. Yeah, <laughs> I think actually, Trey, Trey Gray is the first guy I saw that he had his in a basket in a snare stand, ready at, to go, at matched height matched everything oh, so wow. that and i always just kept mine there i would like i took it out of the basket swapped mm -hmm. it he swapped yeah stance which i thought was cool when but he had help when i was my own drum tech i was such a boy scout and i think now now we have this white glove treatment i don't have to think about it as much but i you always have that two of everything always ready to go always what if you crack a cymbal yeah. what if you go through the snare drum head what if you go through the bass drum head what, you gotta have your WD-40 you gotta have yeah. your extra you gotta have your gaff tape extra wing nuts gotta have everything ready right to go right natural drum crashes Ex two crashes yeah. in yeah. case you crack it yeah. so so you break the bass drum head and then what <gasps> ne What happens next I mean the show is over every, shit my pants everybody's like you know I would probably say that 
most people in the house didn't actually nobody, nobody knew what happened they might have gone right. it sounds a little different but not to the degree that we yeah. on stage I, again i'd love to ask jason i haven't i haven't brought next it up next time you see him, I, like, I will i'll you ask remember that in 2004 God, 16 ago. years ago but man on stage worst feeling ever just oh, nothing yeah. you can that, I mean, I, you can do. I've never done gigs to the caliber that you guys have done. I've done bar gigs and stuff like that. But I broke uh, a bass drum pedal spring in the middle of a, big, a gig, and I had to improvise with my left foot mm-hmm. on the double kick pedal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That would that would fuck me up, too. Yeah. Man. That would be tough. It's I've had right. a few uh, gear snafus. You, you ever had a good gear snafus? <clears throat> <laughs> the beats get really simple. At I have that never point. gone. I've never gone through the bass drum head during a show. Thank God. That was a one and only, one and only time thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, what? The, I mean, you, you no, have to stop the show. I mean, and we got to. Sorry, guys. Nah, we just had to finish. Play on the floor time. Hey, acoustic set. You know, got to yeah. do an acoustic set. You know, Play the song acoustic. It was set. the last song, fortunately, but yeah. it was the single. It was like yeah. it was the reason radio was there. Yeah, as long as two and four yeah. is there. That's on it. Snare drum. That's I mean, it. what do you do in that situation? It probably you got to f- have a contingency. You go to the floor time. You ride the hell out of it. That's it. Yeah, and there's no way he's underneath you trying to change out the bass drum head. I mean, we would no way you could change the bass drum head because you have to move everything, get the hoop off, get all this. We would literally take a five minute break. The house would go dark, and Jason would say, um, "We have a technical issue, and the only way to fix it is to go dark for five minutes." Let's play some songs acoustic. We would. I was going to say, we would would probably. I would (laughs) probably just say something to D. We have a bitch mic. I'm sure you do. Like do two by yourself. Yeah, for those of you guys that don't know, the bitch yeah. mic is this little mic <laughs> where yeah, I guess I, all the guys in the band can hear the lead singer come back and go, what's going on tonight, guys? You sound like shit. I mean, uh, yeah, let's jokes. get it together. Or this cloud is this crowd's a little dull tonight, guys. Like, step it up. We got to earn it. Just anything. Anything. Although it has an actual purpose. It's really there for audibles. Yeah. Changes, which we don't do a lot. Cut this next song. Cut, I don't yeah, feel moves, it. I don't feel it. I want to do something else. I want to add something. That's really why it's there. Yeah. Uh, and then I have one that I can talk to the band that only we hear. Yeah. Yeah. Do you now, have you're that? the band leader, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Do you now, have that? how did you get that position? So, I've been band leading since Carolyn Dawn, which is 1999, 2000, yeah. give or take. Um, and I've band led almost every gig I've ever been on. So, so it's just for, sort of... Yeah, for the layman, what are your responsibilities? So, in, in the early days... For me, you know, first thing and foremost, you got to put a band together. You got to hire. Yeah. I was really pretty good at hiring. I Did you hire that drummer I told you about for the other gig? I don't have to look. Called me like no, two months ago. I know, I, I did. I, I was looking for artist. something. Oh, they, they still haven't done, they've only done uh, guitar. Okay, there you go. He's still on the list. <laughs> uh, but, you know, hiring guys is big. Uh, on the road, you're sort of the the go-between between the tour manager and the band. Gotcha. You're the guy that, you know, they only want to hear one voice. They don't want six guys going, where's my hotel key? Where's this? What are we doing there? Everything filters through. Uh, but mainly just being in charge of the songs, what's happening, what's your arrangement, what's your instrumentation, mm-hmm. intros, outros. Sound check. Running sound check. Do you guys changing arrangements on the big hits every year or we kind of like set those in stone and just change the set list order? No, we change quite a bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, we've changed. I, I really, the Hootie stuff, I changed a lot, but not at all. Mm-hmm. It just kind of sounds weird. Keep the melody. Keep the overall sense of the song. Change instrumentation to change the vibe. Yeah. So, like, only want to be with you. Probably one of their biggest, certainly top three. Sure. We've kind of turned into a bluegrass feature. Okay. Just to change it up. Yeah. But then once you get in the meat of the song, it's still the song. But instrumentation is different. Yeah. So, which is cool. You got to freshen up. And I got to play with your fiddle player, Gary. Yeah. What a great player. Freak. Nice guy. Dude. Plays so nice. everything. Sings. Like, you didn't even hear him sing. He sings like a. Vince, he's like Vince Gill Jr. Dang. Glorious. Isn't it nice to have be surrounded by such talented people that you enjoy as as friends as well? We were super lucky. Yeah. But again, when you get to put the band together, you get to pick the guys that are really freaking good. Oh. But also buddies. Yeah, know. man. Skill first. Buddies. Yeah. Buddies. It's up there. Mm-hmm. You know? I always say when you're hiring a band, you can hang out with anybody for 90 minutes. You got to live with them for the other 23 hours of the day, 22 yeah. hours of the day. And Choose that carefully. makes a big difference, you know. Four so there's a balance of, mm-hmm. of talent and not being a, and hiring not a douchebag. That's what I've always heard. Remember about you saying is that you got to be a good hang. Got to. Yeah. Because you won't make it if you don't. No one wants to hang out with a diva. And I don't think I've ever heard anyone tell me a story about another guy about, man, this guy like missed three parts of a guitar solo one, one year or didn't, you know, wear the right hats on stage. <laughs> But if he was an asshole on the bus, yeah. you hear that. Bad news yeah. travels Bad 10 news times travels fast. fast. And know. it's funny because in, in the documentary, not that the, you were the person you were playing with in this particular scene in the documentary, yeah. but 
the bass player in one of the scenes from um, Working the Dream. Yeah. Uh, what is that, Jim? What's that? What is that, Working the Dream? Working the Dream is a documentary starring Rich Redmond about the uh, a week in the life of a Nashville working Blue collar musician. Well, it's a snapshot because it is. Yeah. It's old now. It's 10, 10 years it's, old. Yeah, it's about ten years old. Yeah. But I mean, um, in that particular, there's one scene where you're playing live, and you're about to do a cymbal swell, mm -hmm. and I think the bass player accidentally hit, like plucked a, a note, and it's so funny because you catch it and it's written all over your face. You're like, <laughs> uh oh, that was nothing really that big. To, was that with Emily West? <clears throat> it was the Emily yeah. West kick. Yeah. As a band leader, that's that's like one thing that I super frown on. You gotta sell it. Playing when you're not so, supposed if, to. No, if somebody blows oh. it, dude, you can't sell. You can't show them with your sell you the know. mistake. Because yeah. that, that is literally one of the things I talk about all the time. Yeah, I don't care if you just fell down. We're gonna act like it's still great. Yes, because yeah. they probably don't know that you missed that note until the whole band goes. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Now the now the twelve year old in the back knows. Yeah, you know so. So yeah. what, what, what would you that tell a, sing, a, a young person or a younger person or a person that's in any, you know, season of their life and they want to come and they kind of want to navigate Nashville? The Nashville scene? Yeah. What did you learn all these years, 25 years? It meant it's not the town we moved into. Right. It's a whole new town. Yeah. It's a whole new social media. Gigs are different. Auditions are different. Ableton everywhere. Ableton everywhere. I'm just learning Ableton <laughs> yeah. at the ripe age of 46 and three fourths. Well, if we don't if we don't keep up with it, <clears throat> that's how you get left behind. But. The last month, I've yeah, I finally know how to work Ableton. Nice. Only took me 47 years. <laughs> 46 and change. <laughs> you got hey, Instagram it's, uh, drummers on. You know, man, all you could do is be prepared, be a good dude, and make friends. I know you've said that, but I've said it for years. Your relationships come first. The jobs come second. If yeah. you don't have relationships, you're never going to get work. Networking. Got Every everything, yeah, everything comes from who you know and who your buddies with. And I didn't mention Byron House, who is the leader of Dead Set. I mean, he right. he put me on the map in Nashville. That gig put me on the map. If not for that, I don't know that I would. I mean, maybe somehow, some way, but all the trees right. will filter in some way back to Byron. If you could trace your Nashville family tree, so yeah, Byron was a uh, is and still is. Is he? Yeah. He's oh still, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, a very active session yeah. bass player. Well, and he was touring with uh, Robert Plant as of. Three years ago. Any champion? I think he's off of Robert Plant. Nice. Champion, absolutely. Nice. Yeah, he's the start of the tree in Nashville for the most part. Jim says we have to take a break. As I was going to say, speaking of relationships and buddies. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. we'll be right back. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Well, our big tagline has been inspiring kids to rock on stage and in life. We changed it actually to inspiring the world to rock on stage and in life because when kids are here, they learn so much more than music. They learn how to be on a team. They learn responsibility. They learn to take responsibility for their actions. They learn to organize their time. And we try to teach them, you know, not to be that person that nobody wants to be on a tour bus with. <laughs> Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Jim, you have the random question of the show. Yes, the random question of the show sponsored by School of Rock. Somebody School. can sponsor <laughs> the random question of the show. Oh, just Jim, it out so there. shameless. Sponsored um, by the book. Yes, that's, that's right. right. We'll Amazon bestseller. Course. The, the Amazon <laughs> bestselling book, Crash Course for Success by Rich Redmond. I need you, bud. It's the random question, random question, random question of the day. Random question of the show. Okay. Anybody in the world you could have a beer with and have a conversation with, who would it be? Yeah. Uh, sentimentally, my dad. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We lost him last year. Oh, man, so, I'm so sorry. It's, it's so still sorry. fresh. It's still raw. Lost mine uh, 14 years ago. Yeah. So I it's, it. it's not easy. Nope. Um, <clears throat> but on the fun note, man. But your dad got to see you. And he oh, my dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he was, Celebrity he, he was a champion. Yeah. So yeah. so for me, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, there's bottom. Mm. Bottom, bottom would be interesting to John talk to Bob. for a little bit. Yeah, you guys can both vomit. What would you ask? Picaro? <laughs> Man, I don't even know. I, I would just love to be in the room with those guys for 
when they made any one of those tracks. How about mm-hmm. that? Any, I mean, just be a fly on the wall in any Zeppelin session. Well, you mentioned two guys that, that died so prematurely, really and they left behind such a huge body God, of work. Right? They amazing. accomplished so much at such amazing. a young age. Amazing. And I think that's why. Because, you know, anyone who's still living, we, we've been fortunate to meet a lot of our heroes. Right. Um, and the heroes that are still there, I, you know, I wouldn't put it past one of us running into them. But those guys, you know. That'd be good. Do you have any... Um, back. In your, you got a drum space where you do your tracking or anything for folks? Like, I do not have a home track. I did in the other house, and oh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't do this You're one. Saying, in the new eh, house. I'm not going to take my job home. That was kind of it. Yeah, you know, and and fortunately, I know so many guys that have great rooms that I can get that I can you know use. Uh, yeah, and, just, and it became a yeah. There's a college fund and a Jeff Studio fund, and <laughs> somebody won. Hey, you know, I think uh, you had brought somebody up before we went live, and I'm intrigued by her penchant for uh photographing drummers oh yeah lj yeah Let's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give Brilliant her the I. please give her all the love and she could sponsor the, the uh random question of the week yeah, well she lj a, she's she, a beautiful person yeah and a, just an incredible eye for all photography but man she shoots drummers she loves drummers she really does she shot my third or fourth annual drummers weekend with thomas lang and mark shulman it was a me- epic i that's where I actually first saw her. Like you tagged her. She, yeah. she did some work. Did you come to a round table that year? I, I didn't come to the round table. I haven't been invited to the round table. Well, dude, we got to do one of these saying. things. I tell really you what, do. these things are harder to. Oh, man. Um, it's tough. They're harder to promote because education is a tough sell these days because people think they can get everything for free on, on YouTube, YouTube. But you cannot. No. Yeah. I'm just saying, being in the room with Greg Morrow and picking his brain and sitting down behind his drums, that doesn't happen on YouTube. Right? No, it doesn't. Right? It doesn't, There's I mean, a lot of stuff you can't pick up on. What we've learned from our teachers, hand to hand, physically yeah. sitting. Yeah, you know, so I learn from Richie every time I see him. Well, um, we, you know, we. Uh, you know, that's we, how this works. Yeah. You know, you, steal. Yeah. Well, but it, yeah, I don't. I don't use that word. I like no, but we steal. But it is good but composers you, but, borrow, but, but you, the great yeah, composers. But you, they, to me, it's just, and it's not even music, it's energy and it's vibe and it's experience. And, you know, we, I mean, we've been chasing each other for 20 years. I know. And here know? we are. And look at us, so, some of our common companies. What do we got here? Let's nerd out a little bit. You're with Ludwig Remo. Oh, no, Pearl. Sapien, Sorry. Sapien, right? Pearl. Oh, you went to Pearl? Yeah. Oh, you got to on the website. Man, is this still on the old? Oh, oh it's on there. That is way All right. Old. When did you make the switch? Four years ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, my website's out of date. We love yeah. Pearl. But hey, we love Saban. We love Christian. Well, we had, we had, <laughs> I had. Chris McHugh over sat in that very chair and I said man your website has tour dates for like 2011 all right, so I'm not. I'm just in <laughs> front of McHugh. Yeah. <laughs> as far as updating, I'm um, not far in front of him. Come see me in 2011. Okay, so yeah, I mean, talk about saving. Oh my god, I can't, I can't, such I can't innovation. talk enough. This is, uh, since high school. Yeah, since high school, just so good. And they're making new stuff all the time. I'm the artists and stuff. I'm still getting. Oh yes, yeah. some stupid, right there. Stupid. Some right there. Yeah, we can't we can't move the camera, but it really Dark, is. It really is. Yeah. Artists and symbols over there that are like, you know, I have a 19 inch crash. It just is like heaven in the studio. <sighs> it just opens it's up just like cool. that. Yeah, Simpad, Roland. Yeah, there's so many SPDSX. people listening that are non drummers going. What are How can a symbol about? be like heaven? Yeah. It's like you don't know. Until Wait till you, you hit it. You yeah. gotta hit it. You got to, it's like, you know, I, when I played, I was more of a cymbal guy. You know, the drums were secondary. I always liked the cymbal. You just had like a, you had a lot you of jazz. You a jazz guy at, at heart? No, I was a rock or guy. just, yeah, but it I just. I mean, when I had the most amount of drums, it was more of a Carter Beaufort setup because that's what I was into at the time. Sure. Splash cymbals and chinas on yeah. two sides. And I had an X, I didn't have a standard hi-hat that was sta- straight up and down. Yeah. And I had it, why are you, why are you smirking? No, I'm just, I'm just listening. <laughs> I'm listening to you. It's li- awesome. I'm picturing you playing open-handed too, which you probably. I, I took an X hat, a cable hat, and placed it directly in front of me. Oh, yeah. Instead, oh, of, like, instead of doing, so I could, so I could just sit play like, just open-handed. And yeah, DW's yeah. got this cool little uh, gidget now where it attaches to the, the bass drum rim and you could put like a little X hat right there oh, on like the that. rim. By the way, the low boy last week at your acoustic show? Yeah. Sexy. It's fun. I had a Most little, people don't know what a low boy is. So I mean, that's old school. <laughs> yeah, so the, the back in the 1917, 1918 Jeez. birth of jazz, there was these musicians that would play for silent films. It was the vaudevillian era. And one day, the cymbal player didn't show up and then the snare drummer was there, and then the bass drummer called in sick. So one day they said, 
how about we create something where one guy can do all three of these parts? So it can, there first came a bass drum pedal and then came the, the sock symbol or what they called the low boy, which was the original hi-hat. Right. Okay, which yeah, is, yeah. Which is why it became a hi-hat because it was so we low were playing for years. the uh, cajon, right? I was playing this cool thing that LP and DW created called the box kit that my friend Josh Trask created and he sold the rights to DW and LP. Now he works at DW and LP doing product design. Nice. And... Um, I hooked the pedal up to a cajon, and you could play with your hands. You could play with wire brushes, uh, blastics, uh, hot rods. Are you were rodding it, I think. And then, yeah, thing. rodding it. And then yeah. you, and then there's a little low boy, which you don't necessarily hear, but it just reinforces the backbeat, so you feel oh, it. Yeah, yeah, I could hear it on your. Yeah, yeah. I had Fun. to comment. You got to check it. I I had to comment. Get one of those things. Man. I might have to. Yeah, <laughs> be great. Totally. <laughs> just a good look. It is good luck. Old school. Man. So what is, uh, what's the future for you, my friend? What's, the, uh, what's exciting you right now? What's, the, what's happening in five years? What's the, what's, what are you working on? Man, five year. I'm more two One year. years. Well, I got a kid going to college next year. This is so, crazy. Which is amazing, yeah. right? So, you had kids at the right age. I had kids at a pretty good age. Yeah. yeah. So we got one in college. We got a seventh grader. So he's a little bit further behind. Yeah. Um, I still think D's going to be at it. So I still think we'll be doing our 50 55 shows, yeah. which we're very lucky to be in those numbers, not the 180s we used to do. Yep. Uh, but what I've been doing lately is a lot of uh, musical directing. I I've worked with maybe seven young acts in the last month. Oh, it's a whole so, new yeah, it's like business a whole, model. It's a whole new business model. So I'm actually, uh, I work with, a, there's a company called Built Music that that's what they're doing. They're show building established artists, new artists. Every Who's that guy? Matt Payne. You know Matt Payne? You know Matt Yeah, Payne. I know Matt Payne. Matt's, so, Matt, yeah. so Matt's company. Um, and I've been, they've been hiring me to consult as a musical director, so, which yeah. has been a lot of fun. I mean, I'm doing it quite a bit. Isn't that great? You could take your uh, knowledge and experience and you become a consultant. That's it. Dude. Yeah. That's and it. At one moment, at one time, uh, maybe like six, five, six years ago, I thought about creating NashvilleMuso.com and mm -hmm. it was going to be like almost like a Barry Squire type referral service. Right. But then I felt weird and icky about, you know, using my network to recommend people. So I just, and for a price. And so I just said, right. I'd rather have the karma points of just constantly recommending people because that's how I got jobs was people that's recommending it. me. Yeah, it never felt about right. It never felt right taking money for that because yeah. I've recommended guys I've recommended to your gig. Yeah. Danny Rader. <clears throat> Danny Rader. No audition well, business on your owners gig. do it. Totally. I know, but, it, but totally, that, you know. In the creative arts, it, yeah, doesn't, it, feel it right. doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. And everybody in town does it. You know why? Because if you do it, say you do it for somebody, and, you know, we're very lucky to be on long term gigs, but at the flip side, you want that guy then in two years, 18 months, whatever, recommend you. Yeah. That's, so there's a, I think if you take money for it, it feels. And I think over time you understand the nuance of knowing who would be good for a certain project. That's it. You know, you gotta know who fits. matching somebody. You gotta, yeah, up, you know. for sure. You got to know who fits. Yeah. The first thing I ask is, okay, um, is the artist signed? Yes or no? How are they traveling? Is it an RV? Is it a 15 passenger van? Is it yeah. a bus? Are they fly dates? What's the backline situation? Is there a hot meal? Do they get per diem? How <sighs> many people to a hotel room are there? Yeah, yeah, Do they yeah. get their own hotel room? Yeah. And then what does it pay? That's and then it. I have to immediately think, okay, who can play the style? A lot of people can play the style usually. And it's like, okay, so if it's only paying this amount of money right. and what is the age category of That's the artist? It. You know, it. because a 23 year old Visual girl matters. does not want a 60 year old man. That's it. Visual matters. Mm. I mean, even if the guy's built like an Adonis, she wants to have somebody that knows the cultural reference points of the things they're talking about exactly. in the van. That's exactly That's right. Yep. Yeah. What would you want to um, ask a uh, working drummer like Jeff? We have a lot of working what is it, journeymen. It's like I'm almost sure. like when a comedian says, "I'd say master." We're lifers. Yeah, yeah. we're For lifers, sure. man. For sure. We're not, it's not. We're not just going to do one open mic at Zany's on a right. Monday. We're going right. Every all day. the Every time. Day. And we've been lucky to work for a lot of artists in our time. Yeah. You know, you got any fun stories or people that you were, that were faves or, um, I'm still think, intrigued by the bitch, Mike. I think that's, that's I mean, awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's not the official term for who it. Named what we all it? call that's I don't thing, even yeah. know. And who, Nick, who came up with the word germ? Do the, do the, the singers. Word, I, yeah. <laughs> and is germ spelled with an H? I still don't know, but you know, yeah. Like well, I, if you, if you follow the germ guys, it's G H E R M. G -H -E -R -M. Are they still, are they still active? I, oh, I, I look see up they, the just, they still post. Yeah. yeah. Are they Travis, the he's a, he's an airline pilot now, but. Uh, oh, got out of the game. Yeah, he's kind of, he's doing well for himself. Who's he garming? I, I don't know. I think he's Southwest. Gurning. He's he lives in Vietnam. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's gurning. If, if I was if I was a um, pilot 
I would, uh, you know, I would go work for Southwest. I feel like they're the feel good company. Here's a good question: What would you do if you weren't playing drums? If I had a whole other lifetime to chase something full time, to start I, over, I would just be an actor. Yeah, welding. That but makes I'm, sense. I'm doing that. You know, I'm doing <laughs> yeah, that. you're doing both. I'm doing that, which I love is the fact that um, that uh, in that line and in many creative lines, um, you could be um, tall, short. Dark, yeah. pale, Whatever no hair, mean. full yeah. head of hair. You. They, they need you. Yeah, no matter um, what you are, yeah. And, you know, drummers, I love it. I love it to the day I die, and it defines me. But eventually, this mild case of arthritis is going to become a full-blown case. Sure. You know what I mean? And I want to die with the sticks in my hands. But but um, if, if, if there's drummers out there and musicians that don't have any sort of other interest or side hustle, you could be in trouble. Fair. Yeah, you got to diversify your Just talent. Just a little something. Plus, I think... What would it be anything, yours? Anything you do outside of music makes yeah. you a better musician. Mm -hmm. I've always believed that. What if, yeah. is it, what's something that you've always wanted to do? Man, I, for me, it's two things. Lawyer was actually one of the things yeah, I wanted to be. Yeah, but you know, lately I would probably work in sports. Oh if I yeah, could start you're all a big over. I, yeah, and I, doing just, what? Man, like an agent? Maybe an agent? Show me maybe the an money. Agent. Yeah. Maybe an agent? Yeah, because I wasn't really good enough at anything to play any of them professionally. Yeah. Good enough at all of them to think I was good enough. But you at can any negotiate, of them. you could sell. I think so. Yeah, right or even contracts. just work for the, like, just working for the team, the office staff of a sports franchise. I agree. I, I could it's see a fascinating my, industry. Yeah, I, I always saw myself yeah. as a possible guy candidate for the Titans. I don't know what I'd do for them, but I think yeah. that would be a fun job. Huh. I, think it would, I think it would be fun. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, uh, our next, uh, I don't know when this is going to air because sometimes we go out of order, but the next episode that is coming out this Friday mm -hmm. is our friend Nick Raffini from Drummer's Resource. Right. And he created this wonderful, uh, very popular website. He's got 580 drummers on this podcast. And he was just interviewing this young lady and, and out in the interview came this idea that he might go get his baseball agent what did it, it would uh, whatever, be? Whatever, yeah. The it, thing. I don't know if you have to. I think it's like the music business. I don't think you have to have a degree. It's like real estate, time, but, but you yeah, have to get you have a, to have thing. a license. You yeah. have to get a thing. Sure. And you have to go to school for quite some time. Yeah. And he's I interested in doing a whole time it. thing. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. It's a fascinating industry. Yeah. I mean, I always yeah. feel like Kurt and Tully could do something in sports as much as ESPN is on 24 7 on their phones and on all it's the television. That's pretty much all I watch. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's. Do they talk about it a lot? Sports. I don't know if they is, talk about is it. Is it on because it because of that, or is it on because it's better than putting on any of the other news channels? I get my news from the guys because I don't have like live TV, right? Right. So, and I don't read newspapers, sure. guys. I, this is painting a really bad picture of me, but I get my news from my band, from the band. But you know, I'm I'm kind of the same way. I used to I used to be immersed in news and politics and all this stuff, and it did nothing for me. Yeah, all it did was make me mad. Yeah, you know. Hey, I'm going to engage with the person on Facebook and tell them that they're wrong. But you know, you're not changing anybody's. It didn't you're not further changing your life. Mind. No, I didn't enrich no. your life. Nope. I, yeah. I marinate my mind in good stuff these days. Yeah, and, you do. And sports don't either. But it, at least it's a great distraction. The sports is is you know, you know it's friendly. It, you know, yeah. there's no yeah nothing about it's going to change your life. You it's friendly competition. Yeah. So you know, of all the sports, what are the ones that are like for you? I mean, for me, uh, playing wise, there's no secret in Nashville golf. That's my. Nice. That's, That's right, my, yeah. man. Colt Ford. Are you out there with Darius doing that all the Yeah, time? we play every day. You know, Have you Colt ever played? Ford uh, plays. Yeah, I know Colt well. Yeah, Jason, good dude. He was almost a professional golfer. Well, he was, he a, was a he was well. I mean, he, he basically was, was. He grew up in the junior ranks and went yeah. that route. Like the guy's still insanely, you know. Yeah, he yeah. could have made that run. That well, that run. What's your favorite course around here? You like playing around here yeah. or period or in general? Play. Yeah. I mean, Augusta National. There's no better place really? in the world to play golf. What What is the holy grail? That is that's, that's, a, yeah, that's the spot, National. and you played that's there. That's it. I, I'm very fortunate to have done that. Nice. Yeah. We've we're we're spoiled. We play a lot of good golf. Guess what? My dad does. Plays, plays golf? golf. Two hole in ones. Nice. Wow. He's that. He's that guy. I have none. He's my dad. I have two. Zero. Sometimes that you play your whole life to make that happen. For sure. Yeah. For sure. He's yeah. got. He's got a pension. I think for that's it. awesome. My yeah. in-laws yeah. uh, serve the PGA. They do most of the trophies. Oh, nice. Yeah, for all the different tournaments yeah. that golf courses have. PGA Kirk, is a Kirk great and Matt. Oh, Kirk and Matt's awards. There you go. Brought, I think there's a lot of. By them. There's a lot of parallels between golf and drums. Mm. A lot. Uh, from a physicality mean? standpoint. Oh, as far as like uh, technique yeah, and, yeah, as, and and the posture. Fact that, and you never master either. Mm -hmm. It's true. Never master. You're never going to, I don't care who you are. You're, you're never done learning. Yeah, some people say that, either. you know, this guy's a master of his craft. 
And there, sometimes there is truth that you get to the point where, you know, you're working, you're creating a body of work. You kind of, but yeah, there's sure. always that yeah. keeping up with the Joneses. And there's never a day where I'll, any of us, I think, feel like yeah, I can do anything I ever want to do on the drums. No, yeah. you can always do it better or easier or cleaner. It's like, why did I rush that film? Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. I mean, for me in my old age, it's about ergonomics. I don't know about you, but that's what I, when I practice, it's symbols came down. Yeah, everything. Over the years. Yeah, your shoulders are little, little <laughs> well, less. Country thing We're to not do. pulling so much up. Yeah, it's here just more. down. I Trey, remember, Trey still does. I don't know how he does it. He's still, ah, The country thing to do was to have the symbols way up here. Like sure. That. John Gardner, ride symbol, flat. Right? Oh, yeah. Straight. But I mean, you get, you get better stick control when it's, you're not fighting gravity. It's almost like the, uh, remember the, the, the drum riser that tilted everything? Yeah, oh, I definitely do. I sat in one one time. Really weird. It was, so but the whole, Super that's it. The guy, he was talking about inventing that. Yeah. yeah. Was, he says, I was literally, um, I reclined in my seat in my car and realized it was easier to play because I wasn't fighting. That thing yeah. did not take off. No. I feel it looked bad. like it should have. I feel bad. Like it, I wanted one so bad. That was my pun. I'm so glad you didn't There's not it. a drum tech in the world that wanted that thing to become <laughs> <No>. successful. <laughs> Ar Aronoff had one in his, yeah. in his, in his studio. Now, in, did you in study his home with studio. Kenny? On and off, yeah. I met him when I was 12. Well, how close were you where you were in Indiana to where he lived in uh, Bloomington? About 40 minutes. So yeah. well, we had a mutual teacher, Kevin Kaiser, who's uh, I think still with the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. He was my teacher growing up, and he went to IU with Kenny. And, and I, I had gotten to a certain point of, of skill where he said, I think you could use, you know, so he kind of introduced us, and we, we did some stuff on and off. And then he actually, when I moved to Nashville, we probably got together every five, six weeks. Just good to have a guy to talk to. Yeah, so he was really good to me when I was young and trying to come up. Yeah, but never helped. He'll, for, he won't. For the he layman, won't help he Kenny won't, he is won't one of the you. most recorded drummers, oh, and he's played with uh, Cocker and Melissa Etheridge in 14 years with the Mellencamp Mellen band. Mellencamp, long time. And my two favorite records that are my my uh, Desert Island records are the Lonesome Jubilee and Scarecrow, which I feel like we're Fantastic. way ahead of the time. Well, I also I think he's brilliant on uh, Patty Griffith the Red. It's oh, just. That's there's a couple songs on there. Yeah. And he was here all the time when the music business was healthier yeah. and, and yeah. clients were, and record labels would pay to fly someone like that and around. Yeah. 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 And then when I think, I think he was a visionary when he saw that that wasn't happening. He was like, you know what? I'm going to take all my stuff out of Indiana, all my stuff out of Nashville and just go to where the sun is shining. That's it. And enjoy my life. Yeah. Yeah. He's still killing it. Still, you know, killing still doing it. a good job. I want to hearken back to uh, something that we brought up and also apply a layman's term to it. We talked about germing. A lot of people don't know what a germ is. Yeah, so a, I think it's a G H E R M, and yeah. it's it's the, the idea that you would you would um, here. I'll just do it. Hey, hey, Richie, 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 help me out, man. Help me out. G give me a backstage pass. Come on, give me one of your sticks. <sighs> Come on, man. You don't you don't need. I'm them all. busy right now you because my all. mom and dad are you here. You don't need them all. Is that Germ that's Germany? I mean, in our industry, yeah. it's it's the Hey man, could, um can I get a VIP pass yeah. um to could, come backstage? Like yeah. we don't really have that. Like I have to be with you at all the times whole, yeah. backstage. I had this conversation literally last night. Somebody said, well, I don't even know why people want it because you would be the one guy that everyone would go, Who's that dude? That clearly looks like he's yeah. not supposed to be I mean, here. I don't they still maybe picture you? that we're having these lavish affairs back there no. it's really some dudes either on his way to the shower yeah. on his way out of the shower setting yeah. something up or working out unfortunately mm. it is not caligula back there no it there's is not these parties with champagne flutes and people with masks uh, okay so you know. i i might have been guilty of asking those questions at one point this well i mean yeah, every, if, everybody does they want to see yeah. what's back there and, and to me, it's a difference of, and I know you get these, like, hey, man, we went to high school together, you know, do you oh, remember the, me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you get me, and this is my favorite, because we've established I work for Darius, I get the, can you get me, Jason Aldean's here this week, can you get me backstage passes and free tickets? To like somebody, so another I, artist? So, right. You don't get those? The, I, I, I yeah. don't work here, but you have to know someone who does. Yeah, I, yeah, I know the guys, yeah, but you, I'm not calling. Do you know the guys in that. Rush? Yeah. Can <laughs> <laughs> can you can you help me out? Can, can I you help me out? Ouch! I Look, mean, we're, we're we're fortunate to be where we are. I don't mean to make fun of it. Yeah, but, but it's it's uh, it's still a job. You I have kinda, to, and you have to treat your job with respect. Yeah, and I can't go to Darius and hey Darius, I know you're friends with you know. I was Questlove. Give me backstage passes to Jimmy Fallon next week. Like you yeah. don't do that. But I had an idea at one point with you, Rich, that um, when we were filming the uh, Working the Dream documentary. 
it was actually wasn't going to be a part of the movie. We just happened. You, you wanted me to be with you on stage shooting your drum solo. Yeah. Remember that back in yeah. 08, 09? Yeah, so cool. And this is when you and I started to know each other. We didn't. We weren't as close and tight as we are now, obviously. But um, at the time, I was. I pitched you an idea, and it was looking back one of the more, probably one of the more embarrassing questions I've ever asked. Sure, you want to bring it up? Sure. I'm on okay. the edge of my seat. Yeah. Uh, I said, dude, what if, you know, I, while you're doing your drum solo, I grab a broom, right? And I sweep the stage in front of you while you're, while you're playing. Like a Carol Burnett show? Like I was yeah. literally, I went Carol Burnett too. That's Kinda what like I was I'm pictures the, right where I so went. So old. Like the sh- sh- I'm the yeah. janitor. And then <clears throat> we both make eye contact and you kind of slow down and I kind of slow down. And then all of a sudden you kind of get up and hand me the sticks. And I fl- and, and I sweep. you come around and you start sweeping and I finish the drum solo. It's a very um, a stomp kind of a thing. <laughs> very stomp. It, it started Curl Burnett. It went to end. But then it ended up sort of like in a weird like pseudo documentary thing. Like was now it, I feel like it should be filmed in black and white. Is that Gurmy? I, no, I think it's a cool idea that it could actually work as almost like a sketch comedy piece. It would have been funny. For like, I think it could be a short. Like Funny or Die. Yeah. Like a Will Ferrell's company. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there was know. actually Johnny Rabb had a really funny idea and he, he every time one, I, I one of a million oh my gosh he's 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 got some hilarious ideas and he uh, he came over to the house and we had dinner with him and burgers and stuff but he told me about an idea he says man I always wanted to do this thing called the studio night where you're you know you have a documentary something somebody's recording and some dude just dressed up in a, as a knight runs through the <laughs> studio and launches himself into the drum set and just runs out that's Johnny Covered in armor? Just in armor. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I think this little short idea uh, with the broom, I already know the actor that I would hire is a guy named Ryan King, and he moved to Atlanta, but he plays a little drums, and he is funny as hell, and he had a commercial, I'm so proud of him, on the Super Bowl for the Tennessee Lottery. Did you see that one? That's Ryan King. Oh, really? Yeah. But I wasn't here. I was out of town. I, so I didn't see the Bowl Tennessee too. commercials. I missed it. Yeah. I still haven't seen the J Lo and Shakira performance because everyone's complaining about. It. I'm like, guys, okay. these chicks are, are are pushing are fifty or pushing fifty, and they look great. They look great, and they you know are dancing their butt off literally. So is that What's a, the problem? Is that, is that a Gurmy story? Just to kind of get back. That's not really Gurmy because you didn't yeah. ask for it. You didn't ask for it. I think I did, and you were just like you you were really nice about it. And I, I, at the end of that, I was like, I shouldn't have asked him. No, yeah, just, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't rank that as that doesn't fall under the germ yeah. category. What would be another germing thing um, that we get? The all tickets, the time? The, yeah, it's kind of hard. You know, <laughs> it's tough. If hey. that you got to think about it, if that person is asking for tickets on that one particular day, there's another 364 days a year that other people can potentially be asking us for tickets to our artist shows, yeah. the people that are opening for us, or our friends of our friends' shows. Right. Yeah. So we are constantly hit with I, it. I get texts and emails for shows that I haven't even seen on the schedule yet. That's my favorite. Like, hey, y'all are coming here May 31st. Can you get me to... And I'm like, like oh, May 31st? I, and I get my phone. I'm like, so oh, well, that no be, shit. We are going to be there yeah. May 31st. Great. I, I'm going to call my mom. You know. So with that being said, can can you get me to... <laughs> We'll talk off air. <laughs> so, guys, JeffMarinoDrums.com. It's not completely up to date, but I love it the could font. Use a little update. And you'll get the idea that there's there's he's got pictures here with his celebrity buddies. It's connected to his Twitter. He's got YouTube stuff. He's got his credits. It's a great way to find him. Yeah, and I love also, it, man. And he's also the uh, he's got the Ask for Tickets tab on I the, do. Yeah, the ask, ask. It says ask Germany. Germany. <laughs> That's the exclamation point. We need to actually put that on. We should have a Germany button. What's your uh, what's your are you on the IG? Or do you do the I'm Instagram I'm on the gram. Thing? It's uh, Jeff Marino Drums, as is uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Are all, all the same. same. Jeff Marino Drums. Jeff Marino That's Drums. Here, here's something. Okay, here's a good That's example it. of germing. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna look. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow you on Twitter or on Instagram. So okay. you can go ahead and follow me back. Okay. Okay. That's germing. I don't. Think, I don't know. I don't think so. I think that'd be pretty for someone who you you know you know well you don't know me don't but know. you you know I, I don't know that, that somebody qualifies. out of the blue he knows you now and he knows that he never wants to have anything to do with you ever again. <laughs> I, I think there's more of a nice. Oh, you, you didn't tell me that sound effects. I would have hit the buttons all day long. Where's the put up ching? Where's okay. it at? That's the blue one right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just so there fun, right? Know. I know. It's the same one on Laugh USA on I love um, it. on Sirius. I love that. I'm following you. Love, love, love. Nice following you right follow now. Right? Follow, yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, right. so, follow back. Absolutely um, follow back. In closing, pivotal moment in your career that was that was a game changer for you when you knew that the, the tides had turned and your career was going in a much more positive direction. 
Do you remember? That's like, tough to isolate a Because you know the Vic first videos moment. where they're like, pivotal moment. Yeah, I did one of those. <laughs> I did the... I'll just tell people to go look on YouTube I, for the... It's out there. Yeah, the, the Vic first pivotal it's, moment it's a, good, it's a good interview. I didn't do the... Okay, I, pivotal moment. Mm. Man, it's hard to put it down to one. Like where you said, I can pay my bills without a day job. Yeah. <clears throat> did you do some of those when you moved to town? I did a few. Yeah. I yeah. did the substitute teaching in the par the car yeah. parking and the... Tracy Broussard and I worked at the Hard Rock Cafe together. Wow. Yeah. As waiters? Uh, and uh, uh, whatever they call the guys at the front. Now, I don't use the word security, but oh, like um, hosts, but it's, yeah. it's different at the Hard Rock. Kind of it's right. got their own thing. The host. Pseudo security host thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That nice. was a long time ago. That's Pivotal moment. Food. Man, I, I will say a pivotal moment, not the pivotal moment, because it was, was actually taking Darius's gig, because I almost didn't. Wow. Yeah. That would have. And that was a pretty good, cool, life changing moment, because he's a friend and, a, you know, we, we've all become a really big family. But, you know, you have get, we get offers yeah. uh, more in the 90s and 2000s uh, than we do now. Mm hmm. Uh, and you have to decide, like, does this fit my career? Is this a good move? Is this not, you know, there were two other gig possibilities at that moment. You followed your gut. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I asked my wife. Okay, that's good. So that's well, good I guess I follow. did follow my gut. It, there were mm. two other bands at the same time that are still doing really well that, that were calling at the exact same moment. And they were both sort of established Nashville acts. And I sort of talked to her about it and she was unsure. Because Darius is kind of a big thing. I said, well, look, there's going to be eight, ten more of these guys. There's only one time you get a call from a legitimate household named Rockstar. Yes. So even if the gig lasts one month, which is all we agreed to do. Wow. It was a 30-day gig. It was a 28-day gig. So, but I took that and turned down two other long-term gigs just for the, see where it went. Yeah. It took a little risk. So it took a little, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you have to take a risk. Which, some, is, yeah. which is not in my personality profile. As a dad and a guy who's trying to navigate, I always took the more conservative route. Yeah. It was one of those moments where I definitely went against my really? conservative gut. Well, it's kind of funny because the, the nature know. of the, your, your careers in general is a risk. Yeah, I think it's inherent. Yeah. But yeah. within it, I always took the I always took the sure bet to say how many you know how many shows we how got how many shows mm -hmm. what do we have and I'd stayed on gigs that maybe necessarily weren't what I loved to be doing mm -hmm. but they were more likely to pay the bills totally wow. you know when you're a dad you have to look at things and I sometimes think, oh, I yeah. yeah no Jim's a uh, yeah, three kids man yeah so but, Some, th but Darius was definitely I th would say it was a risk he would tell you yeah he didn't think he was doing an album that he figured I'm going to do this and I'm going to go right back to Hootie right away. <laughs> you know and within by the end of the month he had a number one record number one single we had 130 dates on the books for the following wow. year so I that was a pivotal moment that's awesome yeah and sometimes there's people in our lives that are kind of our spirit whispers that know us better than we and we need their input so Jim does that for me my girlfriend Kara does that for me Kurt and Tony know me really well my parents know me you gotta have these people in your life for that sure can, that third party perspective because if we'll get caught in our head overthinking oh, everything for sure. Shout out to Tully. The inner circle. Friend for 20. I've known Tully. I met him before you moved to town. Yeah. What? At the same time, because he was doing a bunch of chapel stuff. Yeah, he moved in 96 or 97. Mm -hmm. Through Rachel. Yeah. Through Rachel. That's it's how really, I met Tully. It's really crazy. Crazy. Tully and I kind of have a love-hate thing going on. Ah, oh, he loves you. You're jealous of his hair. Totally. He's jealous <laughs> of yours. He is. What did you learn? Man, I learned that, um, you know, Jeff came uh, two years before me and um, he greased the wheel and shook hands and crashed parties at a solid product. He's a nice guy, a lot of follow through. And it took him a while to get this thing where there's that steady thing coming in. But it's a patience game. It's a persistence game. He believed in himself. And all these years later, when you have a steady job like that, you got that good W-2 income. You could buy rental properties. You can go to the bank. They <laughs> love you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're raising your I family. I need rental properties. You know, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're raising your family and making a difference in people's lives We're all doing at the our same best. time, man. We're doing our best. Uh, the what did you learn feature portion of the show is brought to you by Sabian. I'll just put that out there. Shout out to Christian. <laughs> yeah. I learned um, about the bitch mic and uh, Gurming. We kind of had a nice little deep dive on that. We did right deep that. dive that. I'm very, I'm fascinated with the whole bitch mic concept. I think that the that next, time, the next time you go to a show, you're going to see it and you're yeah. going to go, oh, I, I know wonder what doing. he's telling the band. That's right. Yeah. yeah. If you he don't like, know what to look for. He looks pissed. Yeah. It's fascinating. He's like, no, like the rest of the band kind of reacts like, oh, they all yeah. roll their eyes. <laughs> 
<laughs> I tell you what, man, I we've had so many great drummers sitting in that one chair right there. We go so far back, man. I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. Honored you Thanks for being here, man. Always good. Guys, Always good. look for Jeff playing around Nashville. If you're a singer-songwriter, you can hire him to play on your record. Of course, you could see him on tour with the Grammy Award-winning Darius Rucker. Hey, pal, we love you, man. Thanks for being here with your time and talent. Oh, me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Good chat. I tell you what, man, you have so many skill sets and you do so many things that I don't want to do. And That's I love I'm, you for it. And damn that voice. <laughs> That's why I'm so tired. It's, it is a sexy voice. It is a sexy voice. Hey, School of Rock, thank you so much for sponsoring our show. And hey, friends, family, fans, we know you're out there and we appreciate you checking out the show. Be sure to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Tell a friend, keep coming back for the good stuff. And stop asking for tickets. <laughs> We'll see you next time. <laughs> this has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, comment, and follow us at richredman.com forward slash listen. <laughs>